the general manager of the Mets, joins us right now on the Michael K. Show. Sandy, it's Michael and Don. How are you? I'm uh, happy to be here. Uh, hello to both of you. Um, Sandy, I would think that it was not an easy move for you. You know Dave Hudgens uh, for, as you said, decades. What triggered the firing of Dave Hudgens, and how difficult was it for you to pull that trigger? Well, look, it's uh, it's hard it's hard to let anybody go, and it's certainly hard to let go someone whose uh, whose work you respect, um, whose uh, you know work ethic and uh, commitment and. Uh, relationship with the players uh, you respect and uh, have have uh, appreciated and observed, you know, for a long time. Um, so that was, you know, that was that was obviously difficult. But um, you know, we had been looking at some of the same issues for a long period of time. Um, our home road splits uh, offensively are just not uh, not great. Have not been for a long time. Not just this season. Um, some of our situational hitting this year, we just have not um, done well with. Uh, I don't attribute all of that problem to the hitting coach by any means. Um, one, he's not up there hitting. Two, he's not a psychologist. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, things uh, uh, revolve around results. And um, at some point you have to... Um, do what you can at least to change the circumstances a little bit and maybe affect the results. It's, uh, you know, in some cases there are positive results from change of this type. Sometimes there are not, but uh, just felt that at this point this was, uh, this was a change we had to make. So you believe that there's talent offensively on this team. They're just, it's untapped talent or underachieving talent. Well, keep in mind that, uh, uh, and I think these statistics are accurate. We're, we're leading the we're leading the league in run production on the road. Uh, so the question is, why are we so successful on the road and so relatively unsuccessful at home? And um, you know we've try, been trying to figure that out for some time. Uh, this year it has to do with uh, our offensive production, which is down pretty considerably from the road. Now this isn't you know the best hitters park. Uh, but at the same time, um, you, you, you might ex expect the runs to be depressed, you know, somewhat at home. Uh, but there's been such a divergence from the results on the road that um, that's something we've we've been taking a look at, and something we have to fix is that um, because the players, you know, are somehow um, uh, less suited to this ballpark. Um, I don't think so. Is the ballpark intimidating? Uh, maybe to some extent, but um, you know, when when you're not getting hits with runners in scoring position, it's not about home runs. It's not about you know driving the wall to the fence. It's about something more fundamental. So, um, do I think we have the most talented lineup in the National League? No, probably not. Um, but at the same time, whatever talent level you have, you're trying to get the most out of it and. Um, you know, what I'm hoping is that uh, from this change, we'll get a little more out of what we have. Sandy, I've talked to, talk to opposing players that have played at City Field, and they say that if you go in there for three games, it's not going to mess with your head. You just stay with what you do, and you can hit the ball out. But it does affect the Mets. They, they've talked to them. It affects them because they think they have to swing differently to get the ball out, and it affects hitting with runners in scoring position because they, they play their 81 games a year. So, I mean, this is a topic probably not for this day, but why is it so cavernous in right center field, which is where David Wright has his power? What's the purpose of that gap out there? I think that's a good question. I think that um, you know we've we've uh, altered the fences once, and um, uh, you know it, is it something that we may take a look at again in the off season, uh, perhaps. But um, look, we have David Wright for the next seven years. We have uh, uh, Curtis Granderson for the next three after this. Um, so it is something we sh we should take into account, and uh, you know. Um, it's not something we can do anything about currently. So uh, I think that what you referred to as, you know, players trying to do too much is probably, um, you know, one of the issues. And whether that's because of uh, uh, the size of the ballpark or because of, uh, you know, some other pressure at home, I, I don't know. But, um, um, you know, it's something that we're, we're – uh, 
going to do our darndest to try to change. Well, Sandy, coming from a Met fan, I wish this was your only problem. Another major problem has been this bullpen cost you another game yesterday. Now, when you built this bullpen, were these the guys that you believe can do the job, or was this really only you, all that you could afford with the budget you had to work with? I think what we were trying to do was bridge ourselves to the point where uh, we had some people at Las Vegas that we felt could help us in the pen. So when Parnell went down, um, you know, what we had uh, to bridge us were Farnsworth and uh, Valverde. I don't think either one of those two was considered a long-term proposition for us, but they were, number one, they were insurance in spring training, and number two, to the extent they got out of spring training with us, as they did, uh, they became a bridge to some other people. Um, you know, we've moved uh, Mejia to the bullpen to this point. He's adapted to it well. Um, we're seeing Familia develop. You know, what I've always said is that our bullpen is going to be good when our own players uh, uh, emerge from the farm system and give us the kind of flexibility with options and, and what have you uh, to move them in and out and to really have the kind of arms there that uh, uh, have a chance to be successful long term. Um, so I'm not making any excuses for the pen, but before yesterday, our pen was kind of middle of the National League. Uh, I think we were eighth in earned run average. And uh, if really the only uh, eyesore there was the fact that we hadn't converted uh, uh, saves, which is obviously a big factor. And that's why uh, Mejia is sort of matriculating in that direction. But, Sandy, uh, I'm, I mean, you're a genius when it comes to numbers. ERA and relievers doesn't really mean that much. I mean, they're coming in and they're letting people score and they're blowing saves, so the bullpen hasn't exactly been what you want it to be. I mean, uh, that's not a great gauge of how a bullpen pitches is an ERA. Well, you've got an ERA and you've got uh, blown saves and uh, save opportunities. Um, Inherited runners. Inherited runners. Look, all I can tell you is that if you looked at our pen before yesterday, and we didn't get hysterical about uh, Jose Valverde yesterday, um, we were kind of middle of the pack. So, uh, and that's with uh, you know some some huge numbers in there from people like uh, um, uh, John Lannon. So, look, I'm not saying the bullpen's been lights out, but uh, actually, if you go back and look at it over a period of time. Uh, it's been much better.